Hello everybody and welcome back to Beer and Ed 40K. Today we're going to talk about something that has interested me for a long time. And that is the question of, in our games, our RPGs, our war games, are dice rolls truly random? Because in our games we rely on dice rolls to determine specific events. Some of these events being quite important to the outcome of the game. We rely on the dice to generate randomness for us. But I don't believe that any dice is truly random. And I'm going to say some things that might, if you follow, kind of make you think along the same lines. So where do I come from here? What makes me say this? I'm from Las Vegas originally. I've worked in the casinos myself, and I have several generations of family members that have worked in the casinos. My grandma, my mom, my dad. And my dad, he was a dice dealer, and it still is 30 years later. Even though he's a casino manager now, he is often required to step onto a live game and deal dice, okay? So everybody has heard of loaded dice. So loaded dice, there's something used by cheaters to win, basically. But what not a lot of people know is that over time, every dice becomes a loaded dice. This is a phenomenon known as the casino gaming business as bias. So bias occurs because as you throw dice, over time, the edges, the face, they begin to wear down. And because of physics and the path of least resistance, a dice or multiple dice begin to find their way, more often statistically, to the same result over and over. And the more time that you use those dice, the more ingrained that bias becomes. And this is why the casino dice is retired, usually even after less than a night. A lot of times after even a shift, they're taking the dice out and they have multiple dice on the table so that when it's a new shooter's turn, they bring out a different pair of dice for them to use. And there'll be, you know, five or so in play for that shift, that, you know, six to eight hour run. Now the casinos discovered that bias occurs even after rolling just on a super soft table. If you look at a craps table, they're rolling on felt. And when they strike the back wall, they're hitting foam, these little foam pyramids. So if bias is happening to the point that casinos are worried about it on a super soft table, imagine the state of your buddy's ancient, grimy, Cheeto-covered dice that he's been rolling for years and they've been clacking against models, hitting against the bases of the models, hitting table edges, hitting the other dice during the roll for years. So put simply, what all this means for you is that each time you pick up some dice and you roll them, the next time you roll them, the result is less random, even if it's only slightly. So it's something to keep in mind. And another thing to keep in mind is that bias can be negative just as much as it can be positive. It can also be neutral. You might find that you get loaded dice that make you lose, basically, that form all by themselves over time just through what I'm talking about here, this natural process that occurs as you pick up and roll dice. So another aspect that affects a dice roll that I think is worth speaking of to war gamers and RBG players is that people have the ability to set dice. So setting dice is a deliberate positioning that people do. For example, if you don't want a seven to come, you know, you position the dice in a certain way so that when you throw them, statistically, the seven has a slightly less higher chance of coming up. So what that goal is, is making unwanted results come up less often. But it has been scientifically proven that statistically, there's a slightly higher chance, if you were to just pick up a dice off the table and roll it, statistically, the favor is for that dice to land on the face up that was showing when you picked it up and rolled it. So the too long didn't read version is if you pick up a six on the table, statistically, the best chance that you have to roll right now is a six. If you pick up a one and you throw that dice, statistically, the odds favor that dice landing on a one. This is proven. This is scientific fact, and I'm going to link an article down below that talks about some of the things that I'm, I'm talking about here. It's really kind of an interesting subject for me. So this translates to RPGs. 
you know, n the number on top being most likely to statistically be the result of a roll can really affect a game. Uh, but setting can also be used to avoid a result. So numbers tucked in, or basically that's, that's slang for being on the side of the dice when you take it and throw it, have a less uh, statistically uh, likely result to occur. So this is especially true if the dice are thrown straight end on in. If you pick them up and you flick them in a, in a straight manner, you know, horizontally just across and let them land, that's when really the dice setting kind of takes in. And if you think about it, that is what most people are doing on the tables. So how do you get the most randomness possible? What if this is something that matters to you? If you're a tournament player or something like that, or even if you feel like you just have the worst luck in the world and your dice just keep failing you. Well, for the most randomness, I have a few tips. First thing is to consider getting fresh dice. Now, fresh dice for every game is impossible uh, you know, it's just economically not feasible for the average player in friendly games. But tournament and event organizers should seriously consider fresh dice for every event. And making sure that all the players share a common dice pool. That's going to be a really important thing. The next tip is what's called washing the dice before each roll. Now, I don't mean taking it to the bathroom and washing it with soap and water. Washing is a term used in the casinos for taking, for example, a deck of cards, laying them all out on the table, and just pretending to be a preschooler. You're going to mash both hands all around, up and down, back and forth, moving the dice over each other, around each other, to completely randomize and, you know, get them rolled around, mixed completely, before you pick them up to roll. It's something that, again you might forget to do. It's not the most crucial thing in the world, but if you are truly feeling, you know, a stickler for randomness, if you suspect something's going on, for example, or, you know, things just aren't going your way, try that wash. Reset the dice. You know, take all your dice, give them that wash, and then pick them up and give the throw. And I pretty much can guarantee that you'll start to change some of the deterministic uh, values that were now starting to find their way into your dice. Because again, if you're just picking up dice and throwing them, a lot of times you're going to get that same up result. So if you've been rolling ones all night, this is a symptom of that. Same thing as if you're you're rolling hot. If you've been rolling sixes all night, or if you're a RPG master, game master, and you're rolling, you know, twenties all night or ones all night, consider giving it a real mix around or bringing in another dice, for example, or something, because there there might be an issue going on there. So finally. Last tip is to evaluate your rolling surface. Scientifically, it's been proven that a rough cloth is better for a random roll than a smooth or soft surface. So how can you get around that? You can make a small rolling table. You can make a dice box, basically, and make sure that there's some rough cloth on the bottom. I mean, you can construct that, and it's going to be much superior to rolling directly on the table surface itself. And for the most randomness, ensuring that the dice hit some kind of a wall before falling to death and, you know, rolling on the table and getting the outcome of your roll is going to be the most random way to do it. So, you know, having your table up against a wall or something and rolling that way, making sure the dice hit the wall, bounce off of that, and then land on the table is going to make sure there's a little bit extra randomness. Again, you're going to have to pick and choose what is basically feasible for your group, your game. It's going to be different for everybody. But if you build a dice box or something, you know, definitely think about it. You can make one edge taller and make sure you chuck into the box. So basically, I hope that was interesting to you. Yeah, my goal of this channel is to provide a unique perspective. And the fact of the matter is, my very first words were craps calls. Because my dad was a dealer, you know, the first things that he taught me, he thought it was funny to bring me into the casinos and say, tell him, tell him, and, and make me say, for example, seven out, line away, last come, pay the don'ts, you know, and, and all these things that the dealers say to each other all day on the game. Oh, dice, keep the dice on the, t on the you know, uh, on the table, Mabel. Oh, they're in the lobby, Bobby. All of these things that they, oh, dark side shooter coming out. Yep, Darth Vader shooter you know, things like that all day. They say these same things, yo 11. And growing up with that, 
I have a special interest in the game mechanics for the games that we all have come to love. And hopefully, with videos like this, I can share a different perspective than what's already out there and kind of make this channel valuable to the most people possible. You know, because this is something that can affect every gamer pretty much, as long as it's not a video game. Anybody, RPGs, war games, narrative skirmish, whatever you're playing, a lot of times you're rolling dice. So it's an important thing. I hope this was useful to you, even if it's just something interesting to consider and think about. So I'd like to know your thoughts. Um, let me know your, what you think about this. And if any of this is going to be something that matters to you in your games going forward. So this has been Bearded 40 k uh, wishing you guys the best. And if this was valuable, perhaps consider a like, comment, and subscribe. So take care, and we'll be talking to you again soon. Bye-bye.